We thought we'd start off with the story about your funds this year. And the answer we are all looking for today is, did your funds survive the storm? I'm about to make presentation on the performance of the fund as we've been able to listen from the Auditor General who's confirmed that the financial statements do present a fair view of the, affect, uh, of the activities of the fund as at the end of the financial year, 30th June 2020. So my presentation today about the performance will be in five parts. The first is to talk about who we are, a little bit of history for us all to come to the same page. The value we've been able to create as a result of the fund being around, the environment in which we operated during the period of the financial statements that we are presenting, and therefore how we performed. But I would also like to put a little bit of time in the plans for the future, specifically uh, with regard to the new law that is currently before Parliament. So who, we, who are we? We are a statutory body, the National Social Security Fund. We are a retirement benefits provider. We are set up under an Act of Parliament, CAP 222 of the Laws of Uganda. And our mandate is to recruit members uh, collect, uh, collect uh, contributions, invest those contributions, and pay out accumulated savings uh, in a lump sum to a member who qualifies under six conditions. Our purpose is to make lives better, and we passionately dedicate ourselves to making savings a way of life to enable more and more people improve their well-being. And our vision is to be the social security provider of choice. I'd like to begin by introducing the team that I worked with in the year. My deputy, Patrick Ayota, Agnes, who is our corporation secretary, Stevens, who is our chief financial officer, Joffrey, who is our head of business, Gerald, who is our chief investment officer, uh, Joffrey, another Joffrey, who is head of internal audit, Edward, who is in charge of risk, Jean, who is in charge of our operations, another Gerald, who is in charge of, uh, we got a knack for hiring Gerald's and Geoffrey's, and he's in charge of uh, procurement, uh, Barbara, who is in charge of marketing and communications, and Milton, who is in charge of our human resources. That's the team that ensure that we are ticking and are delivering to your requirements. Our strategic goals for the year, by the year 2020, 25, sorry, between the year 2015 and 2025 is to ensure that our customer satisfaction goes up to 95%, our fund grows up to 20 trillion shillings, our operational excellence makes sure that we are able to offer a fruitless or frictionless service uh, whereby our benefits will be paid in one day and instant uh, statement update and then a self-satisfaction level of 95%. Those are our targets for the long term. These numbers are things that we normally talk about but would like to really cast them out into the, uh, into the public so that everybody knows what sort of numbers we're dealing with. Currently, total employers registered on our register or on our database is 55,000. Of those, uh, we have 1.32 million members who've been registered uh, by these companies. Our member satisfaction level is around 88%, but currently the only members that are active is about 20,000 and we have active membership of about 664,000. The rest of the numbers tend to be uh, dormant, uh, but some are dormant with a view that they might uh, be resuscitated. One of our growing business lines is the, is the voluntary, where we have 3,600 companies that are voluntarily uh, registered. 
and under that we have almost uh, 16,400 members who are voluntarily uh, registered and are not required by law to be our members, but they've chosen to do so. And it's one of our growing businesses where people choose to voluntarily register with us. Um, the financials look like today, uh, as at the end of June, we were managing 13.3 trillion shillings uh, with a member value of about 13. Uh, we collected almost 1.3 trillion shillings last year and we made almost 1.5 trillion shillings in revenues uh, with our cost of administration at a low 1.9%. And as you'll see in uh, going forward, uh, it is one of our lowest uh, ratio uh, since the fund was started. On the processing side, we continue to pay out benefits. It takes us about seven working days and it takes one day to up 17 branches uh, run by 16, 600 members of staff, and our staff satisfaction level is about 93%. So you've got a very uh, energized and engaged uh, member of uh, team, uh, which means that they can deliver good results for our members. So how have we created this value? How have the members been able to achieve the value that we create? Um, our business model means that we make collections uh, of 5% from the member, 10% from the employer. That money is then invested in three asset classes. Uh, the first is the alternate asset of real estate. 7% of our assets are invested in that. 15% are invested in equities. 78% uh, are invested in fixed income. Revenues are earned. They are then added onto the member's account as interest and then we pay out the qualifying members. That is our business model, which we use to create value for our members by ensuring that we keep our promise, and our promise is the value proposition. The value proposition is around safety, convenience, and empowerment to our members. The first thing we do under, under safety is to ensure that when they give us their money, we give it back to them, but we ensure that we have a benchmark we are working to, whereby we are giving two percentage points above 10-year inflation, which means that our members receive a reasonable return and therefore their money is safe and safe from the vulgaries of inflation. Number two is convenience, making sure that we provide a one-day turnaround time in benefits uh, and also offer them other services through a fruitless process. And number three is empowering our members, value-adding products that, ha that and information that enables people to look after their short-term, medium-term, and long-term social needs. And at that stage, we are looking at a customer satisfaction rate of 95%. And you will see that this theme plays quite a bit in the rest of the presentation as I'll be making it. So let's look at the business environment in which the fund worked in uh, during the period that we are presenting. We started off with a video which showed you that a lot of things were going down, but if you look specifically at interest rates, you'll notice that the band of interest rates, those figures are between August nine, uh, 2019 and uh, July 2020. You'll notice that the band of interest has been going down Bank of Uganda continues to ease monetary policy uh, following the, the impact of uh, the coronavirus pandemic uh, to allow banks to lend more money. The prime lending rate uh, for most of the banks has been reduced to allow private sector to uh, spur economic development. And the impact of this we've seen is that there have been lower yields on treasury bonds, which is where we invest almost 78% of our funds therefore reducing the returns on our investment. With regard to the economy itself, uh, not only has the Ugandan economy slowed to about 3%, uh, having been projected to grow at about 6%, but the rest of the globe has been affected. We see that the entire uh, globe has lost almost 5% uh, due to the pandemic. Uh, we believe that there will be some recovery in the coming periods, but I believe that for Sub-Saharan Africa and Uganda particularly, we'll see that those contractions and uh, recoveries 
will be much slower than the rest of the economies because it takes a lot of time for the problems to get to our economies. We've seen a significant impact uh, from the environment is the decision by the central bank to ask commercial banks to suspend dividend payments. And if you look carefully, uh, the previous year we made almost 77 billion shillings in uh, dividend income, and that has dropped drastically to 62 billion, largely because of that decision that the central bank made. Uh, this is a slide I'd like um, people to pay a little bit of attention to. Uh, the fund has been growing uh, on the collection side by about 14% for quite a long time, which was a double-digit growth. Before the pandemic started, we had already realized that our contributions were not growing as fast as they should. They were dropped down to about 9%, but as a result of the pandemic, uh, the growth in our collections dropped to 5%. And as I've been saying, this is one of the lowest uh, growth rates that we've seen uh, on the fund's business uh, for a very long time, uh, which means that we need to really find ways uh, of dealing with it. Uh, the last slide I'd like to talk about on the environment is the stock exchange. We noticed that uh, exchange uh, represented by the indices of the, three, of the four uh, countries uh, within the East African region uh, did drop drastically, especially as a result of the pan uh, pandemic. Uh, however, we've seen some recoveries, uh, as you'll probably be able to see uh, during the coming year. So, as a result of that environment, how did we perform? Our income uh, went up by almost 20%, largely driven by interest from uh, fixed income. Our realized income also went up uh, to 1.7, and our expenses ratio, as I said, uh, reduced to its lowest at 1.9. Uh, however, as I said before, uh, our dividend income dropped by 19%. So this is just a graph to demonstrate the ins and outs of uh, the revenue, uh, which shows you that uh, one of the things we need to look at that has uh, been uh, affecting our revenue is obviously the performance of the stock exchange. So if you look at the performance during 2019, uh, that uh, big slump was largely unrealized losses on the stock exchange, uh, which thankfully we've been able to overcome. On the uh, income side uh, against the expenses, our expenses continue to be flat, uh, represented by the orange line. Uh, our revenue uh, has gone up, apart from the bump we had in 2019, uh, but the interest, as you can see to our members, continues to go up, and we did have a record year of 15% uh, percent, uh, about two years ago. So we continue to create value for our members by giving them that return. If you look specifically at where inflation has been moving, you'll notice that inflation has been coming down on an average, largely because we've removed the large, interest, uh, large inflation rates that the country experienced uh, towards uh, 2011, 2012, 2013, uh, and uh, those averages have now come down. So the question we have all on our minds is, with uh, uh, an average rate of 6.2%, what rate will uh, the minister declare today, uh, comparing it to what we, he declared last year at 11%? However, on average, uh, five percentage points is, uh, the member, is the return we've given to our members over and above the rate of inflation, which is a positive thing. Very quickly, a slide that uh, I would like to share with the, with the public and our members is to show that uh, when a member retires, by the time they get their lump sum, they have only contributed around 22% of their money uh, within there. Uh, a majority of that money has been contributed by the employer, uh, who contributes 10%, and NSSF will have contributed another 34%, largely out of interest earned and paid into the member's account. Quite an important slide. Uh, following the discussions that we've been seeing around uh, with regard to how much members get when they invest in NSSF. The balance sheet um, targets uh, show that we've been able to continue to grow our asset base. It grew by about 17%. Our fixed income returns were around 15.8%. Of course, that's before tax, 
Uh, so when you gross that one down, it comes down significantly. Our returns on equities were about 6.5, and our returns on um, real estate were around 6.4%. But you'll also n note that the returns on uh, equity would have been a lot higher if the market hadn't uh, come down drastically in March uh, on the onset of the pandemic. This is just to give you uh, a, a sneak uh, a review of our investment asset allocation, which shows that of the 13.3 trillion shillings that are invested, uh, the majority, 78%, is held in high-yielding bonds uh, spread around the region, uh, with 15% uh, held in equities in all the companies within the East African region and 7% held in uh, real estate in major projects that around the country. So, the fund is fully funded, uh, 13 trillion shillings, 13.3 trillion shillings in assets, almost 13.1 trillion shillings in member funds. So, despite the environment, we remain on course to deliver our long-term strategic goals, which I started off by saying, on the customer and 95% satisfaction rate. Last year, that figure went uh, down slightly uh, to 88% uh, uh, from 84%, uh, looking at the detailed graph rather than the big graph. And the, some of the biggest challenge we continue to have uh, you'll see that the lowest rating uh, on customer satisfaction was around the products that we give to our members. And we are hoping that the proposed amendments to NSSF Act will enable the fund to provide more product range so that we can look after our members' needs, not only in the long term, but, only, but also within the short term and the medium term, as I'll explain a little bit later. The fund size continues to grow very nicely from 5.6 trillion shillings in 2015. Today we ended at 13.3, and we are on course to hit our target of 20 trillion by the year 2025. The other area we keenly follow is on service delivery. We'd like to do a one-day turnaround for our benefits. Currently we are around seven working days, uh, and uh, that, is, uh, 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 that has been done through automation and also increasing the self-service options to our members. Uh, the last area which we keenly look at is uh, our staff satisfaction, and that has continued to improve uh, because of the interventions that we've, Im Im uh, that we've Im introduced in the fund to improve welfare and satisfaction. The main challenge has been around uh, the, the young workforce who easily get bored, and to overcome this, we've introduced uh, an internal innovation program to enable our members to get our staff to get involved and deliver new value, uh, which we pass on to our members uh, as benefits. So the fund is also part of the community. Our performance includes how we contribute to the community, and I'd like to spend just one slide talking about some of the things we've done with the community. 40% of the government bonds today are held by NSSF. Let me repeat that. 40% of all government bonds are held by NSSF. We have been building uh, iconic buildings. Uh, that one that you see there is our ginger branch, but there is another beautiful branch in Mbarara. There are a lot of good buildings we're putting up in Kampala. And we've created over 2,600 jobs through our investments, especially on, in housing uh, and infrastructure. And we've also partnered with the European Union in a fund which enables uh, small and medium-sized companies to be able to uh, raise capital, uh, equity capital, uh, patient capital. And we believe that that has impacted almost 3,000 farmers in Uganda to be able to uh, contribute to the development of Uganda. In addition to that, we've been able to do a lot of CSR. We have a, a plan with our students at the university uh, where we have a career advice, uh, introducing them to the journey of saving for retirement even before they even start working. We've also been able to touch uh, almost seven, 8,000 uh, students who have started savings and we've already collected 18 billion shillings. Uh, in addition to that, uh, our students uh, have been able, we've been able, 
we've been able to cover almost 25 corporate institutions to extend internship uh, through uh, our graduate trainee program, including our own company. Uh, we've been a big fan of raising blood for um, the, the, the community. Uh, we did uh, make a donation of 5,000 COVID testing kits to the government of Uganda during the height of the pandemic. And uh, we have been able to log almost 100,000 hours uh, of sponsored uh, digital libraries for children, uh, both in secondary and in, sorry, in primary and in secondary school, uh, where we've been able to make those donations and help their libraries to get a lot better. So we've been able to pay back to society uh, not only by extracting from it, but also contributing back to it. So what are our future plans? Our future plans is we are building capabilities to deliver the NSSA for tomorrow. Our fund will cater for a member who is across the whole life cycle. One of the things that, uh, that the fund is criticized is that we only think about their uh, retirement, but how about their adulthood? Uh, we only look at old age, uh, and uh, we do not care about our members. So one of the things we want to do is to really look at what is available within the risks that are covered or that are, are meant to be covered by the uh, International Labor Organization. They are supposed to be nine. Today we only cover three of those uh, risks. One is old age, the second is invalidity benefit, and the third is survivor's benefit. So if you look at medical care, sickness benefit, employment injury benefit, uh, unemployment benefit, family benefit, maternity benefit, those are not covered. So one of the things we are hoping will happen is that if we get our intervention through the act, um, the amendment act that is before parliament, there are three objectives of that, pal of, of that bill. Uh, one is to increase coverage, uh, more citizens should be covered. Secondly is to increase the scope of benefits so that there is a wider range of benefits we can give to our members. The third is to increase the adequacy of benefits so that there is a higher uh, benefit to our members when they retire so that they do not only retire with a small amount. And so how do we hope to increase the coverage? One of the, or two of the clauses that within the act uh, amendment number seven and amendment number four will allow the informal participants to contribute to the fund under a voluntary scheme. Uh, under amendment number four, we are hoping that there will be a drop in the number of uh, employer thresholds so that the mandatory uh, employers can uh, begin to, hire, uh, to contribute for members even if they have less than five individuals. We believe that this would be a big deal for, uh, uh, for us and also a big deal for Uganda because formal uh, employer, employers and employees are the only ones who can contribute to NSSF. We believe that there's a huge amount of informal workers who will then become eligible uh, to save for the fund. And in addition to that, they would also, those who are in the formal sector would voluntarily have to, uh, would voluntarily be able to top up on their accounts so that they can have a bigger pot when they retire. The second area is adequacy of uh, the benefit that we pay out at the very end. Again, there are three clauses in there. The first one is about tax exemption on contributions and investments. We believe that if these tax exemptions are included in there, it will give impetus to people to save more, but also the fund to get more money and pay its members a higher return. But it will also allow us as a fund to have a bigger stick to be able to uh, improve on our compliance and also recover areas for employers who have not paid up on their benefits. We think that this will lead to a larger benefit port so that people can get a bigger retirement package at the very end. The last benefit of the act that is currently before parliament is to increase the scope of benefits that are provided. In there, there are two clauses. One is to remove the restriction on the benefits that the fund can provide and empower the board to prescribe additional benefits. That's amendment number nine. And secondly, to prescribe how many members shall access their benefits for voluntary savings, the midterm uh, access uh, under amendment number 10. The fund will have the legal ability to develop new products for our members, especially for the short term and the medium term 
in order to allow our members to have more than just what they get at the moment during retirement. So as you can see, there is a lot that is in the act that I believe in the amendment bill that needs to be brought to, uh, uh, to the floor and concluded and the president accent so that we can then begin to implement uh, these new beautiful things for our members. In conclusion, I'd like to end where I started on our value proposition. So we will continue to preserve and grow your savings. We will continue to deliver services uh, in a convenient manner, and we'll also make sure that we will give value and products across the life cycle of the member, uh, and we can only do that if the amendments to the Act have been passed so that we can begin uh, to continue to deliver on the promise that I've made and we've continued to make to our members. Thank you so much for listening to me.